Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank Allah for blessing us with our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I am very thankful to Almighty God, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, for this great opportunity, privilege, and blessing to represent to you the beloved black man and woman of New York City the divine message of salvation from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank Allah and his messenger for this privilege. And I pray to Allah in his name that I will be worthy or be made worthy of such great honor. I thank Minister Larry for these beautiful words. But I always sit and listen to such words as though the speaker is speaking of someone else. For well, my mind seems to stay on a particular scripture that reads, I can of myself do nothing. And I truly believe and understand that. I have no work. I have no ministry. I have no power, no knowledge, no wisdom and understanding to do anything of myself. For I, like you, was born, as the scripture teaches, blind. Born blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of self and others. And it was not until I met the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and submitted to the divine wisdom of Almighty God Allah that he poured out and began to act upon the principles of what he was teaching me that I began to grow into wisdom and knowledge, into spiritual power, and into ability, which means to do. But I have no work of my own. I'm helping in his work. I have no ministry to speak of. He is the supreme and only minister of God in the wilderness of North America. And Allah has appointed him to raise up 30 million black people from mental and spiritual death. So I am a student of his ministry. And by his permission and the permission of the God who raised him up, I am able to open the eyes of those who are blind and make the deaf hear and the lame walk and raise my spiritually and mentally dead brothers to life. But I can of myself do nothing. And so as long as I understand that I am no more than an instrument, no more than a vessel, no more than a tool in the divine hand of the divine messenger of God, that he may use me as he sees fit, then your words of honor and praise to me are not proper. They should go beyond the tool and beyond the instrument to the one that holds the instrument in his hand. For no man who has ever been healed by a wise doctor praises the scalpel. 
No man who has ever been healed by a wise doctor looks at the instruments that the doctor uses. For the instrument, we thank Allah that there is a good instrument. But without the skillful doctor using that instrument to perform that great operation, then we might not have been healed. So I am not any more than an instrument. And I thank Allah if I'm a good instrument. Because a doctor certainly can bungle up and mess up a job if he got a bad instrument in his hand. It is a joyous thing to be an instrument in the hand of God. I myself look at the work. And I myself listen to the word and say, mm, mm, mm. Some of the things that Allah blesses me to speak, I didn't know it before I started speaking. But I know who the father of it is. And it is always the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, now you may say, well, why do you want to give Muhammad all the credit? I'm not giving him all the credit. I'm only giving him what he's due. He's due all the credit for making me what I am of good. So I just want you in the listening audience to remember that I can of myself do nothing. I'm only a bearer of witness of the greatness of Allah and the divine messenger that Allah has raised up in America for us. By the help of Allah today, I will conclude our talk on Father and his role. His role is so mighty as the head of his household. His role is so mighty in helping to build a nation that really we could talk all year on Father and never give him enough. But time will not permit us to do that. We want to look at the position of father and how that position has been undermined in America. And what is the result of the undermining of father? As we have said, a father is the head or the king or the authority of his household, or he should be, by nature, by divine right. He is this. Circumstances have made him other than this. But a father is absolutely God's representative to his family. This is what he should be. The children would like to know what God looks like. The children would like to know how God acts. The children would like to know how God thinks. The children would like to know how God judges affairs. The children would like to know how does God use his power. A father is a miniature maker. We don't say creator because the essence of what he uses to make a family is already there. 
so he can properly be called a maker or a fashioner. And by fashioning a family, he becomes the owner of what he fashions. And his name is carried by his wife and by his children as a sign that he is the owner or possessor of authority and power over them by the will, power, and permission of Almighty God Allah. A father should look at his role in the house as sacred. A father should see himself in a divine line. Almighty God Allah first, the modern day messenger through whom Allah is communicating his wisdom second, and that father is the third in line of authority as far as his household is concerned. So the father should line himself up with the will of God so that his household be a small representation of how Allah rules the large universe. The father doesn't initiate a new law. He rules his house according to the divine law. And he makes rules according to the conditions. And by the power of his position, he forces others in his home to obey his rules and to submit to the divine law of God that governs his home. By dispensing justice and mercy, by providing for his children and his wife, by teaching his wife and his children, by going forth and building for their security and their future, he gives his children and his wife respect for God. A father is he who teaches the respect of God. A father is he who creates and makes belief in God. For if the father is a cheap, no good, unjust, lazy, thoughtless, non-productive man. How then can a woman respect the teaching that God is a man and you are a man and a making a drag of One reason why the black woman refuses to submit totally to the belief that Messenger Muhammad is teaching that God is a man is because the black woman has never known a fit man in her life to believe in and to follow. But I say this to you, my beloved black brothers, if you and I understand that God is a man, then we represent God in our household. Our children are not yet men. But if we show them a good example, they will grow to be men. Our wives will learn to love God and respect him and honor him as a man. When we exemplify his divine attributes in our household. Not only is a father the teacher of respect for God. But a father is the teacher of respect for his country. For the flag of that country. For the laws and constitution that govern that country. A father not only 
embeds in his children the divine law and principle of God. But a father also teaches his children the ideals of a nation. Yes, a father instills in his children the love of country. Yes, a father instills in his children the love, honor, and respect for a flag. Yes, the father instills in his children the ideals that they must grow up to bring into reality. We live in a country that has undermined the position of a father. White America has not understood the far-reaching effects of destroying the black family. Hmm. For that word father in Latin is pater. P-A-T-E-R. And from the word pater comes the word patriot or patriotism. The word pater in Latin means father. And if from that word we get patriotism, then it is only by instilling in the children the love of the father of a country that patriotism to that country and its ideals is born in the souls and breasts of the young. And then they will fight and they will sacrifice and they will willingly give their lives to present, protect, preserve and maintain the freedom of that country. In America today, we can look at our television and we can see father undermine, bringing up father. The father is always painted as some stupid idiot who cannot think, who cannot plan. And the woman is always presented as some smooth, clever, business-like, yes, intelligent, yes, far-seeing yes, creature yes, that is always manipulating that stupid father yes, as she manipulates a child. Yes, Dagwood Bumstead yes, and all of this asininity yes, that people sit by their televisions and watch The black man should destroy these things, should not permit children to look at such foolishness. And if the white American has any sense, they will ban them from the television. Because in a sense, white America, by undermining the position of father, they have undermined the respect for authority. They have undermined their own spirit of patriotism. Today, George Washington is laughed at by the young American. Jokes are made of him. Caricatures are made of him. George never told a lie. That's a lie. It is a shame to see the father of a country so disrespected by the children. But white America has undermined her own father. She has undermined the ideals for which that father stood. She has undermined the efforts of the founding fathers who wrote the Constitution. She has undermined the Bill of Rights. She has undermined all that was held sacred. Yes, and so today, the young white American has no patriotism. Yes, he has no feeling of love for his country. Yes, he has no real respect for his flag. Yes, and so the modern day hippie, yes, pill popping, guitar plucking, 
long haired, no bathing, skunkish looking young person. This is what white America is going to hand the reins of government to. And I say, white America, if this is what you will hand the reins of your government to, you have no future. Look at you today, white America, streaking through the towns and the hamlets. Streaking through the cities in the broad daylight on the college campuses. You call it having fun, do you? Pulling off your clothes, running around naked. Your women pulling off their clothes. Isn't it cute, you say? How blind you have become. <laughs> Laughing at your own destruction. But Almighty God, Allah, is turning your mind backward. He wants to show the black man of America that the man that he once worshipped is not even fit to sit with the dogs of his flock. <laughs> see yourself being divinely disgraced. Here you were 4,000 years ago, naked, streaking around in the caves of Europe. And God sent you Moses to civilize you and put clothes on you and teach you how to walk upright and teach you how to go out and master the arts and sciences of civilized people. And you have done all of this. You have mastered the arts and sciences of civilized people, and you have ruled and dominated the lives of the dark peoples of the earth. But now look at you. Almighty God Allah has set his hand against you and is turning your mind backward, even as this happened to the great King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of Babylon. I believe it was he. God turned him backwards in wisdom and gave him the mind of a beast, though he was ruling the world. A part of his punishment was to give him a beast mind. Yes, Today, white people who are supposed to be intelligent sit around howling like wild wolves over the nakedness of their own kind, dashing about in the streets with sneakers on. Allah is making them to rehearse their cave history. Yes, so that you, black man, whom God wants to bring away from this people, may see that they are unfit for you to try to integrate with, but they are the people that you should separate from and begin to do something for yourself. How can you separate from them if you think that their father is your father? How can you separate from them as long as you think that they are your brother? In the days of Jesus, according to the scripture, 
which really did not happen 2,000 years ago, I must continue to reemphasize. But this is happening today. Prophecy is being fulfilled today. The Jesus that you've been looking for, longing for, hoping for, singing for, shouting for is alive today. The Jews began telling the people then, God is our father. We have one father, God. This is the way they say to you. They come to the black man whom they would like to deceive. They say, why shouldn't we get along together in peace? There's only one God, there's only one father, and he's the father of us all. And you fall for that. You say, that's right, that's right. But that Jesus of the book was wise, and he's in America today in the personage of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. That's right. He said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded from God. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. He said, I know you. You are of your father, the devil. Here two fathers are mentioned. One is God and one is devil. So both of these two fathers now have children. And the children of the two fathers are walking together, romancing together, living together. Therefore, Jesus gave a parable that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto wheat and tear. Yes. And they were growing together, but in the harvest time, we would have to separate the wheat from the tear. And the wheat represent the children of the kingdom, and the tear represent the children of the devil. The white man's father is not the black man's father. So Elijah Muhammad teaches and almighty God Allah bears him witness that he speaks the truth. And the history of the black man and the white race bears witness to the truth of this. But here we all are together. And now our true father has come. The almighty and wise God that was prophesied to come after his children that were lost. And he would give them a shepherd. A shepherd that would represent the true father to the children. And he would turn the hearts of the children back to their father. And turn the hearts of the father back to the children. It is being fulfilled today. That man that would do this work is called in the Old Testament Elijah. He would have to turn the children's heart back to their father. And turn the father's heart back to the children. And today your heart and mine is being turned again to almighty God Allah and to our black brothers of Africa and Asia. For the first time, our hearts now are not reaching out to George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Tom Jefferson because now we know that they are not our fathers. Our heart is not reaching out to Nixon and Kennedy. Our heart is reaching to black self and across the water to our fathers and our brothers. And Elijah is turning their hearts now toward us with compassion. Yes. And so the government of America, seeing that the black man at last has a true father and a good father and a strong father, and a beneficent and merciful father 
the government of America does not want her free slaves to recognize a father other than someone white. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad stands in the place of Almighty God Allah among us. As a father, he's calling the black man back to himself, back to the divine law of God. And he's making rules to govern us in a proper manner, our growth and development. He teaches and guides us. He dispenses justice over us. He plans for our economic and educational future like a mighty father. And so we, his children, love him. We love him so much, not because he fathered us alone. Not only did he bring us by the power of Allah out of the darkness of the womb of ignorance and slavery and mental death, but by his nourishment of wisdom, he is making us attain stage after stage after stage until we are reaching out now for eventual perfection. Yes, sir. We love him yes, sir. because he plans for us. Yes, sir. We love him because his guidance is superlative. Yes, sir. We love him because his counseling is magnificent. Yes, we love him because he frees us yes, all of the talents that were bound up in us that we could not use in white America. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest from that heavy burden of working and building up a country in which you have no respect, no recognition. And so a nation and a government is upon his shoulders. And like a father, he instills in us the love of God. The love of God's law, the love of his truth and his principles, and the love of our people. And so every black Muslim stands over his household, that Muslim brother, as a representative of Almighty God, Allah, and his divine messenger. And so the father calls his children to prayer. Then the father counsels his children. Yes, sir. And the father plans for the good of his home. Yes, sir. The father keeps the flag present. Yes, and the head of Islam present in the home. Yes, sir. And the children salute their flag every morning. Yes, sir. It is not the stars and stripes. No, sir. It is the sun, moon, and star. Yes, that universal flag. Yes, that Almighty God Allah put up and only He can take down. This is our flag, the universe. It belongs to the black man. And so every father is a patriot because he's loyal to the father of his nation. And he's loyal to the principles of his nation. And he instills in his children, male and female, the love of Allah the love of the messenger, the love of their flag, and the desire to build a country for the black man. <laughs> now, this kind of father is really a, a wonder. Have you ever noticed when you met a little girl or a little boy that had a good father, and your daddy was not at home, you felt something missing in your life. And you would go home to your mother and say, Ma, I was down the street playing with Jill and her daddy came and she jumped up in her daddy's arm. Mommy, where's my daddy? <laughs> Do I have a daddy, mommy? That's a painful question. 
Because by nature all children look for and need a father. So today, every other black group in America that is struggling for justice, as they struggle and stumble and struggle and stumble, they look over and they see the nation of Islam. And they see our love for our father and our father's love for us and they feel on the outside of that. And they look to the organizational leaders and they say, well, what about the nation of Islam? And some of these crooked leaders, crooked preachers, will say, oh, that's an exclusive group only for them. The white people want to keep you away from this divine father. And so their whole effort is to undermine that divine father even as they have undermined themselves and their father. Now in their envy and their jealousy and their rage over our great love for Elijah Muhammad and our great love for the embryonic beginning of a nation. They talk about our father. They try to undermine our father. I was reading in the newspaper last week. It was in the Post and it was in several other newspapers that the former head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, I think they've named the vacuum cleaner Hoover. It's always out looking for dirt. This particular man, the late J. Edgar Hoover, so unmindful of the principles of free speech, so unmindful of the principle or the right of assembly, so unmindful of the rights that they say belong to everyone, In 1960 or thereabouts, he set about to destroy black groups and black leaders. Now, it's interesting that they named the Panther Party specifically, but they said that there were six black nationalist hate groups that were unnamed and six leaders unnamed. And what they were to do was to send agents into these groups, agents to foment trouble, to uh, seize upon any type of friction or disagreements among the leadership of these groups, to accuse different ones of being quote-unquote agents, to keep these groups from ever gaining respectability or attracting the young. That was some plan hatched in Washington, D.C. Again, in a recent news article, Mark Clark and Fred Hampton, two great brothers of the Black Panther Party who were shot to death in their sleep. An agent of the United States government was sent in and rose to be Fred Hampton's chief security man. How did he get to be a security man? Because he knows how to act. 
The Holy Quran teaches us of the hypocrites yes, sir. that they, their persons please you. Go ahead, yes, sir. They know how to act in a way that you would be pleased by their person, yes, by their warm smile and their apparent sincerity. Yes, but the Holy Quran teaches us they are like pieces of wood with clothes on. Yes, they have no feeling whatsoever. Go ahead, sir. And this agent's job was to get next to Fred Hampton and set him up. And so the night that Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were drugged and put to sleep, the agent let the authorities know they were ready to be taken. But in his own confession, he didn't know that these officers would come in like wild brute beasts and pump lead into sleeping black men. Such a blind, deaf, and dumb traitor when Elijah Muhammad has been revealing to you for over 43 years that the white man is by nature a devil and there is no heart of mercy in him. he would just walk in and take the brothers. No, not him. Because the Bible teaches you of him. He's a murderer from the beginning. And his history is written in blood. The blood of the black man, the blood of the brown man, the red man, the yellow man. And he has shed the blood of his own kind and has shed the blood of all life. Mr. Hoover said in his memo that what he wanted to do was to prevent the rise of a messiah among the black man who could unite all of the black nationalist groups together and electrify them. But they never mentioned who that messiah was. Oh, my beloved black brothers and sisters, in our listening audience, wake up! You who have no respect for religion, you who have no respect for divine prophecy, here is a political appointee, J. Edgar Hoover, in a political office, trying to prevent, in his words, the rise of a messiah, which is a spiritual term. Why a messiah? Why didn't he say the rise of a leader? Why did he say the rise of a messiah? And who is the messiah? That one that has the power to unite all black people and electrify them. What do you mean electrify? You mean give them the spirit and energy of life. <laughs> Preventing the rise of a messiah is like Herod watching every pregnant woman to see which one would give birth to the baby Jesus that they could destroy that baby for they knew that once that baby was allowed to live it would mean the end and destruction of their independence and power to rule. So Mr. Hoover, you wanted to prevent the rise of a messiah. How are you making up? You are dead, but your idea lives in the head of the president and in the head of his own cabinet. 
and in the head of his Congress, we have your mind written in the Holy Quran. We know that there are some who are counseling you to kill us. <laughs> but there are others telling you as it is written, uh, don't do that. For if this be a work of men, it will come to naught. But if it is of God, be careful. Lest in attacking this, you may be found attacking God and you won't last too long. The Messiah you thought lived and died 2,000 years ago. But look, Mr. Hoover wanted to prevent one from rising among black people because white people don't need a Messiah. They've had all the prophets and those that they have killed, beaten, and rejected, there's no more prophets coming to them. But who is the people? Who gain and gain and get a Messiah. Isaiah calls it like this. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. And a government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. And of the increase of his government of peace, there shall be no end. This is not the man Jesus 2,000 years ago, for that man never brought in a new government. He prophesied that a government would come. There was no government on his shoulder. Oh, but look at on our shoulder. Look at it. Look at it. A new nation is on the shoulders of Elijah Muhammad. And he is today called Wonderful. A counselor. Yes, he's a mighty God. You say, what, Elijah Muhammad is a mighty God? Yes, he is. Muhammad says, every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. And if you are God and I am a God, and we all are gods, as David the psalmist say, ye are all gods children of the most high God. Well, if you're a God and I'm a God, then who is the mightiest one among us? It is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He's a mighty God. <laughs> but above him, and the almighty and wise supreme being, almighty God Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad is fathering a new nation that will live forever. And so the government of America, seeing that the people are beginning to look at the children of Muhammad and see that we're well kept, we're clean children. Our father has dressed us up in nice clothes. We kind of look like our dad is rich. And when we speak, you have to listen because our daddy teaches us wisdom. And what we build, you admire. And you patronize. And you're proud of it. Because in the Muslims, you see a new hope for the black man. But what we want to let you know is our daddy is yours too. It says that you've been a rebellious child. And you don't want to come unto your father that he may enrich you as he has enriched us. 
I say to the government of America, you started too late <laughs> to prevent the rise of the Messiah. He is risen. He is risen. He has burst his three-day prison. So the song says, Hosanna in the highest. Mm. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Elijah Muhammad has risen up from the mental dead, and because he is risen, we are rising too. And you cannot prevent our rise. For this is the day of the resurrection of the mentally dead black man of America. So I say to each and every one of you, your father is here. You have a good father. You have the best father. So I say, come on to your father and get unto your father's house. For in your father's house, you will find peace and joy and contentment. And like David said, I want to dwell in the house of my father forever. I don't ever want to leave my father's house. Not again. I left it as you left it to follow a stranger. And now the stranger is on his way to hell for his evil. And I don't have any part in hell because I'm not a child of hell. So let me come out of hell and come away from the devil. And get on to my father that I may receive the blessing of peace and joy and love and unity and knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Money, good homes and friendship. In all walk of life, it's all here under the Father. And that great Father is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank you for listening. May Allah pray to the light of understanding. As I greet you in peace in the Arabic language.